Well, hey everybody, it's Phil Kerner, the Tool and Die Guy, and I received an email a few days ago uh, from one of my female subscribers who wanted to know the difference between a mold and a die. Well, that's a very good question. So the easiest way to explain this is just to take you back to your childhood and go through some of the things that we all saw in our kitchens growing up. The Jello mold. And why this is a mold? Uh, you've got a precast form here and what a mold usually inquires, uh, requires is that liquid material is poured into the mold and it needs time to set and the material needs time to harden and in this case the jello mold what happens is we pour the jello into the mold we put it in the refrigerator to set the material which is to harden it and a few hours later out comes our wonderful piece of red jello there. Another great example of a mold you would see in your house is an ice cube tray. And by simply pouring water into this preformed mold and then letting the material set, which is the water, we put it in the freezer, the material sets and hardens, and out come ice cubes a few hours later. An example of a die that you would use in your home would be a cookie cutter. And here's the difference between a die and a mold. There's no liquid involved. And what we have here is preformed material, which is the cookie dough that mom rolled out lovingly on the counter. And she takes the die, which is the cookie cutter, and forces it into the dough to cut out the shapes. Big difference there. The material, in this case, is already preformed and in its normal state. And the cookie cutter, which is the die, cuts out or forms the shape. Another example of a die that you might see in the house would be this uh, egg slicer and what's happening here is the preformed part uh, which is the egg is, is supplied uh, as a manufacturer. The chicken makes the egg and then we take the egg put it in the die. We take the lever press it down it pushes the material through the, the cutters and out comes a sliced egg. So that's a die. We've taken uh, a form, shoved it through under pressure, and formed new parts without any uh, liquid, cooling, or heat. Here's an example of an injection mold. Uh, these are two halves of the injection mold sitting side by side. The part on the left would be the cover half with four leader pins sticking out of it. That's one, two, three, four, and they'll fit into these four uh, holes here to line up the mold. The mold will shut and under extreme tonnage uh, be clamped shut and then in a simplified version this screw plunges forward with molten plastic into the two halves of the mold and this purple area you see here is the actual part and this mold will be clamped shut for an extra five six you know, seconds depending on the thickness of the material and uh, to, it'll be water cooled to make sure the material cools, sets. And then what happens is this mold will open and it'll be ejected out and you'll have a part. This is an example of a commercial uh, die uh, that would cost a lot of money, thousands of dollars. And again, this is called a die set. Uh, for molds, those two halves are called a mold base. In the die making world, these, this is called a die set. In a die set, you have this half and this half. And again, though, the common thing they have in uh, uh, common is that these four pins guide into these four uh, bushings and they feed a piece of metal in, close the die, and out comes this strip with these pre cut shapes into it, just like a cookie cutter. So, to make sure you understand, a mold would involve pouring something molten into a shape. Uh, two shapes that are shoved together under pressure and then the part has time to cure and out would come something like this plastic bowl. It always involves something, the uh, heat or some way to make sure the material is melted or conformed to the shape of the mold. 
Here are some examples of some parts that you would see a die that would form. Um, these are pieces of metal that are maybe pre-cut to a certain shape, fed into a die, but then the die may pu punch these holes, cut the square, form these bosses, bend it, shape it, but it's a cold process. The material's already been done, just like cookie dough on your counter. It's sitting there, and now the die comes down under extreme pressure and forms the part without the heat of, uh, without the aid of heat or, or setting time. The material's cold, and brute force makes the shape. Molds make parts from material that's in liquid form, and dyes make parts from material that is in solid form. Molding generally requires time for the material to set using some sort of a cooling process. And again, back to our example, you know, the jello mold or the ice cube mold has to be stuck in the uh, ice box to set the material so the material has time to form the part. Um, a die would usually involve a process of brute force to form a cold piece of material into a desired shape. So there's a very layman's explanation of the difference between a die and a mold. I hope this makes it clear for you. If it's not, just uh, shoot me an email. My name is Phil Kerner. I am the Tool and Die Guy, and we'll see you on the next video. Thank you.